Breakout Game, written in pure JavaScript. The game is Breakout Ball, inspired by the famous Breakout arcade video game. Originally released in 1976, the game was designed by Steve Bosniak, developed and published by Atari, and it is very similar to the design of the Pong game. So in this game, you have a layer of bricks lines on the top third of the screen, and the goal is to destroy them by repeatedly hit them by bouncing a ball off a paddle. So I found this step-by-step -step tutorial online that teaches you how to build the game in 10 steps. And so first you create and draw the canvas. Step two and three, you move the ball and you create the bounce of the walls by detecting the collision. Step four, you create the paddle and add the controls to move it left and right. Then step five, this is the game over in the case that you missed the ball and that it falls off the screen. Next steps, six and seven, you take care of the brick field and collision detection. And finally, last, you track the score and the win and the mouse controls. So that's an interesting way of building this breakout game. So this would take anywhere between, I don't know, one or two hours to build it. But instead, we're gonna try to build it by using ChatGPT. So let's go to ChatGPT and our first prompt will be write a code in JavaScript and HTML. I'm gonna specify that we need also an HTML page to create, to create a 2D game breakout game. Let's see. Okay, so it looks like this is generating a simple version of the breakouts by using vanilla JavaScript and HTML. So first the HTML, we have the canvas. So it draw the canvas with the width and the height, 480 by 320. And below we have the script in order to design the game of the breakout ball. So I'm going to start by the HTML. I'm going to copy the code and go to JS Fiddle. And we start with the HTML page. And we should see here the canvas here on this window. Now let's minimize here the console. And let's go back. And I think it has just finished generating the response with the JavaScript. So we're going to copy it. And basically what it's doing is that it creates the canvas that refers to the node with the game canvas ID. Then it creates and draw the canvas with the context, which is 2D. It creates, defines the ball. It defines the paddle, the controls also to allow the movement. And also it creates the lines of bricks, which is an array. So it's going to make an iterations to display the lines of bricks and also the listeners to allow the movements. So this is the utils functions in order to move the paddle left and right. And we also have the logics to detect collision, draw the ball, draw the paddle, draw the bricks, and finally draw the whole thing like so. And it's going to start with, we're going to have an interval of 10 in order to redraw the whole thing. So let's copy the whole thing and paste back in JS Fiddle in JavaScript. And here we go. So that was pretty quick. Let's see if I take this. Oh, and it is game over very quickly because I'm not very quick. So for this game over alert, I think it's annoying. This is blocking the view and it's going to force me to every time hit this in order to start. So we don't have time enough to actually start the game. So I'm going to go back to ChatGPT and say, instead of the game over alert, add a heading with a title game over and add a button to start the game again. So when this is game over, it's going to stop and then we're going to have the options to start again the game. So let's give this instructions again and it's going to generate so here is a modified version of the HTML and the script. So I'm going to need to copy again. Okay, as soon as this is done. So we have the start game that we have requested. So let's copy this. 
Let's go back to the HTML page. Here we go. I'm going to save. Go back to get the scripts as well. Okay, so this is giving us an explanation. So instead of the game automatically starting when the page loads, it's going to start when the start button is clicked. Excellent. So this is what we have requested. So let's copy the new code and go back to GS Fiddle and save. And this time we're going to have the options to start the game, which is going to give us enough time to get started. I'm not sure that this is working just fine. So let's go back to make sure that we got the right thing. So what we were supposed to do instead of copying the whole thing is just that we had to add the extra code inside the logic that was already available. So let's go back and fix this. I'm just going to go back one step before. Okay, and go back to how it was. And then here I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write the full code again. Write the full JavaScript with the changes, including the start again, so it should understand. So what I need is the complete script. We're going to see if it understands. So certainly here is the full updated JavaScript code, including the requested changes. So this is better. So we're going to wait for the complete code to be generated, and then we're going to be ready. Here we go. So now this is finished and it is explaining that the code will now display a game over message when the game is lost and the game will be restarted by clicking the start game button. So this is exactly what we need. So let's go to the top to find the copy button. Copy code. We go to GS Fiddle, replace this code with the new one, start the game. Okay. Okay, so it looks like now I can play it. Excellent, game over, very quick. But anyway, this is working just fine. So the thing that you can do to improve this game is certainly to allow to track the score and the number of lives. Excellent. The next project and challenge will be to create a RESTful API. And for that, you're going to use Node.js and Express.js, which is a Node framework. And the goals are to set up a new server by using the Express framework, create the endpoints in order to create the RESTful API. Then you're going to test the endpoints by using the application Postman. So now this is your turn. But remember that you're not on your own. You can chat with ChatGPT to ask for help. Good luck. Now we are creating a RESTful API and we're going to build this together and with ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and write a first prompt, which is going to be create an API. I'm not going to be more specific. I'm going to see the output. So it's going to start with a definition. And it's going to start with a first example of Python and Flask, but I don't need this to be in Python. And instead, I'm going to write create an API using Express and Node, a simple API. I'm going to specify a simple API, like so. So the first requirement will be to have the latest copy of Node installed on your machine. So we're going to see the first instructions, which is first to create a new directory, a new folder, create a package JSON. Install Express, which is a node framework. And while this is working, we're going to go to the code editor because I am providing you with instructions, which is to create first a directory, then create a package JSON and the index.js, where we're going to set up the server. So let's do that. So we're going to do npm init dash y to create the package JSON. Next, we're going to install Express. Next, we create an index.js, which will be the entry point of this server. 
And this is where we're going to write the code to define the server and create the API. So let's go back to ChatGPT to get the rest of the instructions. So first uh, here, so we have already done this part, which is to create a directory. The package JSON, it is done. We have installed Express. Next, we're going to copy this code snippet. Let's go back to here, the project, and we're going to break this down. So here we have, we add to the scope Express, we create an instance of Express, and we have this array to manage the data. And next we define the routes to create the API. So we have one to display the items, one to display one unique item, another one with the post method to create a new object and add to the array. And for this one, I'm going to choose to actually handle it differently. I'm just going to say request body because I'm not sure which attributes I'd like to provide. It should have an ID, a title, and also a property completed, which is going to be a Boolean. Next, we have a route to update the to-do that we target here in the endpoint. And for this one, actually, I'm going to update differently, which is item is going to be completed. And I'm just going to change actually the value because it's going to be a Boolean. So I'm going to choose to update this one by just marking if this is completed or not. And finally, we have the route which is used to delete the items. So we're going to test this API. And actually, I'm going to make a quick test, which is just to read the root, a simple welcome message. I'm going to say welcome to the API, and we're going to run it. It's going to be with node index.js. And once we can read this, so let me actually change the port because I'm going to change this to 4,000. So that's okay for now. We can just use 3,000, but that's going to be for the next step. Okay, so now we can read welcome to the API. So next we want to test the other routes. And for that, we're going to use Postman. So we're going to copy this and we're going to test the route. It's going to be this one first. And next we want to test with the to-dos. Let's try it. So actually, I think that this is a different name. Let's go back. It's items, my bad. So that should be items. So I'm going to change this to with the right endpoints. And for now, this is an empty array. Let's try to add a new element and it's going to be in the body. We're going to go to row and that's going to be in JSON format. So we're going to add a title. I'm going to say new item. And we don't have, I think we are dealing with unique identifiers. I'm not sure. Yes, we do. Okay, that's great. And next, I'm going to add another property, which is going to be completed. And this one is going to be false. It's going to be new item one. We're going to run. And let's try another one. We're going to run. And here you go. Oh, actually, it cannot work because we haven't updated with the right methods. Let me update it to post. And this time we're going to try again. Here we go. And we're going to try a second time to add another item. Here we go. And if we try to get again, we should be able to see the full list. Next, we're going to try to update one item. So I'm going to try to update the second one with the ID two, And I'm going to choose this method, which is put. And that should change to true. Excellent. If we do get, we should be able to see the complete list. And this one, the second one, which is set to true. And next, I'm going to do another example with delete and delete the first item with the ID one. We're going to test that. And this item has been deleted. So that's great. And if we try to display the full list, we should be able to visualize the complete list, but just the one now because we have deleted one of the list. So this is working just fine. Excellent. And all of that, thanks to the help of ChatGPT. What I'd like to do next is to create an interface in order to manage and display the to-dos. Previously, we have successfully created a RESTful API. Now we want to create a client application. And we're going to ask ChatGPT to create a client-side React application. And I am providing you with a few more instructions for the API. So we're using Course and also Nodmon. And Course is to allow to handle requests from different origins because now we're going to handle the requests, the API calls from the client React application. And we are using also Nodmon, which is a utility application to restart the server automatically whenever there is a change in the GS file. So for example, if you make any change right here, so we're going to open the console. 
you see that it's going to restart the server automatically. So you don't need to stop and start manually the server whenever you make a change in the file. So let's look at the few changes that we've made. So whenever I change an item to the list, I'd rather return here the full list. And I'm going to do the same also for whenever I delete an items of the list, I'm going to choose to return the full list, the complete list of items. So based on that, we're going to ask ChatGPT to create a React application for us. So let's go back. I'm going to paste this code and send. And here ChatGPT is going to notice that it is an updated version of the previous code. So it could notice the change that first we are using course this time. Also for the unique ID, so I'm choosing to generate a unique ID by using this new date that I convert into a number. And same for this one. So based on that, I'm going to ask create a React application to manage and display the data with this API. Okay, so first this is giving us some instructions as to how to create a React app. And next, this is telling us to install Axios to make API requests. And next we have the code. So we're gonna start with this line, so this script. And we're gonna go right here. So I'm gonna open a new terminal and I'm gonna run this and I'd rather call this one app. And we're gonna wait until it finishes creating the new React application. Okay, so now we have a new app ready. We're gonna to navigate to it, which is app. And let's check this one out inside. You're gonna see that in order to start the app, you just need to run npm start. So this is what we're gonna do, npm start. And this is gonna start the server and then open a new window. And here you go. So this is how every new React project looks like. And we're gonna change that because now we have this code which has been provided by ChatGPT. So basically what we have is a few state variables to organize and store the data. And then we have a fetch items. And we're gonna run first this endpoint in order to get the list of items from the API. And we also have another endpoint to add a new item. And here we can change to title. We're gonna see next and we can then update here. And to complete also, we have this one and handle delete. Okay, so let's copy the whole thing and we're gonna replace this code, which is the starter code for every new app. So we're gonna find the root components right here. We're gonna highlight and then do paste. Let's try this one out. And we're gonna make sure that our app is still up and running, of course. Oh, and I need to install Axios as well. So this is part of the requirements. We're gonna install this library in order to make API calls. Okay, so once this is complete, we're gonna run again with npm start. Okay, so now we've got our new interface and we're gonna open the console just to have a visibility every time that we make an API call. So that's gonna be visible under the tab network. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new item just to test it, new item and click add item. So this is working just fine. And if I click on one item, I can cross this one off the list. I'm gonna add another one, new item two, and I can also delete items off the list. So this is working just fine. So we have been able to create an API and also to use this API in our React application. It is no secret that many developers hate CSS. Let's see how we can make the process less painful by using ChatGPT. So right now the interface is pretty bland. There is no color, no styling. So we're gonna ask ChatGPT to help us change the appearance of this application by using CSS. And we have the last input from last time, so we could use the exact same input, meaning that we're gonna simply write and request, write the CSS to change the appearance of the application and make it look good. So we are expressing it in the way that we want to proceed and also the goal that we want to achieve. So let's 
press enter. And so it's telling us that sure, here's some basic ESS to change the appearance of the React application in order to make it visually appealing. So that's great. So that's exactly the request and the goal that we want to achieve. Okay, and this is also telling us that we're gonna to need to import app CSS. So let's try that. We're gonna add all this code inside our application. So that's gonna be here in app.css. And let's not forget also to import to add this one to the scope of our application so it can actually work like this app CSS. Let's go back and refresh and here it is. Okay, so that's already pretty good. So I'd like to make a few changes still. So next I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to reduce, to minimize the width, for example, 60% and to position the list at the center of the viewport. And I'm gonna ask it also to use Bootstrap. It looks like this is already using it. So I think it's fine. So that's gonna be just an extra option. So I'm gonna write ChatGPT to write the CSS to add a container with a width of 60%, then center, and center and center the list, the list on X and Y, meaning that we want the list to be right in the middle of the viewport on the horizontally and vertically on the X and Y axis. And what else could we do? Let's go back. We want to change the button. So I'm gonna ask change the color of the buttons with change the color with a lighter one. I'm gonna say with a lighter one. It's gonna understand lighter one. What else could we do? Okay, so the input. Okay, so we're gonna start with that. So we're gonna get new CSS. Sure, here is the updated CSS to add a container with a width of 60%, center it and center the list on both the X and Y axis. Additionally, the CSS changes the color of the buttons to a lighter shade. Okay, so that's great. So let's copy this new code and go back to the source code and replace. And we're gonna see how this looks. Okay, so actually what I'm missing is because we're adding a new container, I need to also replace the HTML because I think that now we need to wrap the whole thing within a div with the class container. So let's go back to the app component and we're gonna add here class name and then container. And that's gonna do the trick. Here we go. And I'm gonna do that manually. ChatGPT has done the legwork. So we can then add here something like margin top and add some margin like not too much, but something like this in order to add some space like from the edge, between the edge and the list. Okay, so this is looking good. Delete, let's try. Okay, so we can cross the item of the list. And for the delete button, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to change the color. I'm gonna say change the color of the delete button to a red and the add item button to a green. Let's finish with those two additional requests. Okay, so it understands that we need to update the CSS to change the color of the button delete to red and green for the add item button. So that's great. Let's copy here and go back. We can see that we have these additional classes that are new. So we're gonna need to update also the root component accordingly with the new classes, delete button and add button. So let's do that. So now we have here the add item button. So I'm gonna add this class. And this is add btn. And same for the delete button. We're gonna add the class right here and that's gonna be delete btn. Excellent. I think that this is gonna look pretty great. And we've done that in less than 10 minutes. Excellent. And to add to my list, I'm gonna say that I want to improve my skills 
in CSS with chat GPT. Excellent. And we can already cross this one off the list because we are halfway through. We are on the right path. So this is the end of the full stack applications project built entirely with ChatGPT, which was the perfect example of how to use ChatGPT for web development. And we can count on ChatGPT to help during the entire project. We can all agree that this is a real time saver and a game changer. Prompt engineering is a concept of creating effective prompts by including questions or instructions in natural language to direct the behavior and production of the AI models. And fine tuning is used to customize the model with its own data on a specific domain. And here is a definition of prompt engineering provided by ChatGPT that, as a reminder, was trained up to the year 2021. So my understanding is that by this time, the concept was not fully established and it was not considered yet as a standard usage in the huge ecosystem of generative AI. Indeed, prompt engineering is a new discipline for fine-tuning prompts to use language models efficiently and produce better results. And the discipline is growing quickly. In this video, we look at effective techniques to improve the capacities of language models and get the best results from generative AI. So let's look at the instruction that you can find on the official website by OpenNI, and you need to authenticate in order to access this page. So here you're going to find on this quick start guide introduction, you're going to find instructions as to how you can write a prompt to interact with a language model. So first to write a prompt, you need to start with instructions that you can combine with examples and also provide context when necessary. Plus, you have the options to adjust the settings to control the behavior and the output of the language model. So prompt engineering is the art of stimulating and activating the system to its full potential. And here in this blog, we have a list of recommendations on how to write effective prompts with examples of good and better prompts and with less effective ones. For example, by looking at point eight, for code generation specifics. So when you want ChatGPT to write functions, it is good practice to direct the language models with hints, like this example by adding imports in your prompt to indicate the model that you want the outputs to be written in Python. And we're gonna look at one example. For the previous demonstrations, we have built a password generator and also a 2D game. And we have also requested ChatGPT to write CSS for us. So the language model like ChatGPT is already trained on millions of lines of code. So one single line of prompt is enough to get the results expected. Of course, it is good practice to write your prompts with clear and detailed instructions depending on the goal and the use cases. So to design a prompt, you're gonna to need to provide with clear and detailed instructions that you can combine with examples, provide context if necessary, and adjust the settings in order to control the output in order to create variations if you'd like between the results. And this will also help reinforce the training and capacities of the model through learning in one shot or more. This is what we call zero, one, and few shots learning, which is the ability for the deep learning based language models to learn on the fly with the new information given. One shot is when the language model relies on previous data learned. One shot means that one input and one example is enough to predict and generate data generate content, and few shots requires more examples to direct the language model on the desired outputs. So we're going to take this example, and I'm going to take you from here, so from this platform to the playground, built in on the OpenNI platform. And this is something that anyone can use. First, you're going to need to authenticate in order to be able to use this platform and this playground in order to test it. And here I am providing you with some instructions, and this is very similar to what we have built before when we have created a password generator by using JavaScript. So let's take this text, but first what we're gonna do, we're gonna tell the language model how to behave. Right here you have a dialog box, and this is where you're gonna indicate how you want the language model to behave in order to direct and control the outputs. So let's go back. So first, I'm going to tell the language model to act as an experienced developer, 
Next, I'm going to provide instructions as to what I want as a result. So I'm going to add a message and add this message for the bots. And let's hit submit. So while this is being outputted, generated, I'm going to open a JS Fiddle. So we're going to be able to run this code, which is being generated by the system. And this is also followed by an explanation. So let's go to the top and copy from here, which is the start of the HTML document, right here, all the way here to the bottom. And we're going to JS Fiddle and paste this right here. We're going to save and run it. Excellent. So now we have a fully functional password generator application, which is working. So we can here specify the number of characters that we want and generate a new strong password. So now I'm sure that you're going to want to take a stab at building games with ChatGPT as well, because previously we have built a 2D game. So you can certainly use the same way of writing prompts in order to create fully functional games. So these are good practices to keep in mind, which are to be specific with examples and context to optimize results, train and fine tune the models, and overall to improve the experience with ChatGPT. Knowing how to write good prompts will be useful when we create together a next-gen application powered by artificial intelligence, AI. And this will be the secret to maximize and unlock the full potential of ChatGPT. Since November 2022, OpenAI provides access to a set of language models with different capacities. In this module, we make an introduction to the APIs, the language models, and the other key concepts of generative AI to understand how the technologies of large language models like ChatGPT work. So let's have a look at the documentation for developers on the official website of OpenAI. Here we're going to find a quick start guide in order to get started quick with the APIs and models. And here we're going to make an introduction to the completions APIs and endpoints. And we start with the prompts in order to generate a completion. Everything starts with the prompts, with clear instructions that you can combine with examples. And to optimize the results, you can always adjust the settings, like the temperature, which is a setting that you use to control the variation and randomness in results. So zero being the lowest value and one the highest value in order to leave room for creativity. So for example, if I decrease the value to zero, you're going to obtain similar results between prompts. So if you try here to generate a new response, so you're going to see that this is going to be very similar in the next prompt, so the next generation. And if I increase to one, so that's going to leave room for creativity in order to create new original answers between prompts. So I'm going to try this time and we're going to get something very different. So next, we're going to look at how it works whenever language model process inputs. So how it works when you write and submit a prompt. The language model will process the text input by breaking it down into chunks of words called token. So for example, I'm going to say, I need help with a coding problem. You see that this is going to be broken down into different pieces, different units that are called tokens. So next, what we're doing in this module is to create an application. So we're going to build an example of a next-gen application to test the APIs and interact with the language models. So I will walk you through the setup of the project. And I'm going to show you as well how to add an API key to authenticate and authorize the API request to the APIs and language models. So this will be a fun example to discover how generative AI works and how to interact with the language model. But which language model exactly? So we're going to look at the API reference and find the guide for the chat completion API. And this is the same that powers the chat GPT chatbot. Here we have detailed instructions to configure the project. We have an example here in Python, so you can change the language to node. We're going to start by configuring the project with an API key. Next, we're going to define a prompt. You need to define also to specify the model. And the prompt will be a list of messages to which the language model responds in the most natural way, like a dialogue. And we're going to try it. So in this module, we see a practical example of a chatbot powered by the ChatGPT language model. We learn to design prompts 
how to make requests to generate conversations completion. We learn to adjust the settings to optimize the results. And finally, we make the conversation with the AI. This will give us a clear understanding of the underlying concepts and technologies behind ChatGPT and generative AI. Getting started is simple. So first we're gonna create an account and get an API key to authenticate in order to be authorized to make the request to the completions APIs. And finally, we're gonna create and configure a new project, a next gen project with OpenAI. So we're not building the next or a clone of ChatGPT, but the following example will certainly inspire you to build your next next gen application powered by generative AI. Getting started with the ChatGPT API is simple. First, you need to create an account and you have the options to sign up with your Gmail account and I will show you how to do it. Next, you need an API key and this is to authorize requests to the APIs. Then we're gonna create a node application, a chatbot, and we're gonna set up a server with ExpressJS and configure the project with OpenAI. And we're gonna to learn to define prompts and generate conversations with the AI. And so to get started, you need an account. So you're gonna go ahead and sign up. From here, you have the options to sign up with your email or a Gmail account, which I recommend to go faster. So because I already have an account, I'm gonna go ahead and go to login and authenticate with my Gmail account. So doing this way, the process is very quick. And here you go. Once this is done, you can go to here and select view. And this is to give you enough time to get started, get familiar with the APIs in the next
Since November 2022, OpenAI provides access to a set of language models with different capacities. In this module, we make an introduction to the APIs, the language models, and the other key concepts of generative AI. To understand how the technologies of large language models Getting started with the ChatGPT API is simple. First, you need to create an account. ChatGPT was trained on millions of lines of code, so it is perfectly capable of processing, debugging, and explaining code to you. In this video, I'll show you how to use ChatGPT to explain code which is written in vanilla JavaScript. And we start with a simple example with low complexity. So first, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to explain this code, but actually the question is implied because without any prompts, ChatGPT is perfectly capable of figuring out which output is expected, in which programming language it is written, and which task to perform, meaning that it will return a line-by-line -line explanation of this code snippet. So here we can read that this function is even, and it is a JavaScript function which is used to check whether a given number is even or odd. So now let's try again, but with a prompt this time, by providing instructions of the task to perform, we also tell ChatGPT which programming language to use, if this is necessary. But first, let me explain to you what is a prompt. A prompt is a text input in natural language that you submit to the chatbot to give instructions, context, and the information as to what you're looking for. So I'm going to write, can you explain? And I don't need to specify what, because ChatGPT can remember your last input, so it's going to link this question to your last input. And I'm going to hit Enter. So right away, we're going to get a generated detailed response. First, you can read that the function is to check if a number is even, with a breakdown and a line-by-line -line explanation of the function. So we can see that the function signature is even, it is named even, and it explains also the logic inside the body, which is to calculate the remainder of a number with the modulus operator. And it explains also that if the remainder is zero, this means that this is divisible by two, so this is an even number, otherwise this is an odd number. And on top of that, you're gonna get explanations and also example as to how to use it right below. So let's look at another example with medium complexity this time. I'm going to write, can you explain? So this is my prompt. Can you explain this function? So this is fairly simple to explain for an experienced developer. But let's take this from the point of view of a complete beginner in web development. And we're going to get a line by line explanation of this function. So first, we see that this is the function find even numbers that takes an array as a parameter. Then it's going to make an iteration to check which number in this array is even, then return any array, including even numbers. It's going to also explain so the condition, which is used to check if a number is divisible by two by using the modulus operator. And after that, it's going to give us also a correction because ChatGPT is also capable of fixing the code for you. So I had purposely left a small mistake, a slight mistake in this code. And automatically it was corrected by ChatGPT, so that's great. I didn't need to ask, but I'm going to write also another prompt, which is to say, can you fix this code? Let's say that I know that there is a mistake, but I'm not capable of finding where to fix it. So I'm going to do, can you fix this code? And it's going to tell us that we have two issues in this code. and. For this example, so it's going to replace this statement because I'm using the equal sign, but it's not necessary in this example. Instead, we're just going to use the smaller than operator, and that's going to allow the code to run more efficiently. And here we go. So here we just need to copy this code snippet and take the corrected code and add to our project. So asking ChatGPT to explain code may come in handy for beginner developers wanting to learn how to code and improve their coding skills. So now let's look at the most common frequently asked questions about ChatGPT. So what programming languages knows ChatGPT? So ChatGPT can understand and support many programming languages like C++, PHP, Cobalt, and also modern programming languages like Ruby, Python, Java, Kotlin, and Swift. Another common question is can ChatGPT find and fix bugs? We just saw a quick example 
As a reminder, ChatGPT was trained on millions of open source lines of code, so it is very helpful for processing, debugging, and optimizing code. Finally, can ChatGPT write code? The response is yes, absolutely. With advanced natural language processing capabilities, combined with the support of many programming languages, ChatGPT can provide assistance with your next coding assignments and web projects. So we're going to see together plenty of real-world examples built with the help of ChatGPT. Now let's see next more of ChatGPT in action. Now I want to learn something new. I want to understand what is a prime number. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT, what is a prime number? And the output says a prime number is a natural number greater than one that has no positive divisors other than one in itself. So to summarize, a prime number is a number that can only be divided by itself and one without remainders. And it's going to provide also a few examples as part of the outputs. And we're going to ask another question. For example, is 13 a prime number? And the response is yes, because 13 can be divided by 1 and 13. Let's ask another question as an example. And I'm going to write just 15 and 15. So I don't need to be explicit because ChatGPT remembers your last input. So this input will be linked to the last input. ChatGPT understands it as is 15 a prime number. It's like a conversation. So let's hit enter to see the answer. And the answer is no. 15 can be divided by itself and 1, but also by 5 and 3 as well. So this is not an example of a prime number. So the lesson learned is that a prime number can only be positive numbers without leaving remainders, decimals, or fractions, and it can be divided by itself and 1. So now I want to write a program to check if a number is prime. So I'm going to write, write a function to check whether a number is prime. And I think I have a spelling mistake in weather, but that's fine. ChatGPT will figure it out and actually fix this for me. It's going to understand my question. And automatically, ChatGPT outputs the answer in Python. But my request is actually to have a function in JavaScript. So I'm just going to let it finish. And so my next request will be convert in GS. I'm just going to write GS. It's going to understand it as JavaScript. Let's hit enter. And right away, we're going to get the equivalent in JavaScript. And right below, we're going to get also an explanation of this new function. And it's going to say that it works similarly to the Python previous function. So that's great. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy this code snippet and try it. We're going to test it. I'm going to GSBiddle, which is an online code editor, and I'm going to create a new sandbox here in JavaScript. I'm going to paste this code and we're going to try it in the console on the right. And I'm going to write is prime. I'm going to check if 13 is a prime number. So it's going to say true. I'm going to try also with 15, which I know is not a prime number, but we're going to test it. And the answer is false. Perfect. So here, what I'm going to do is purposely leave a mistake. So here we have a condition line four, which is to check if any number less than or equal to three is a prime number. So that should return true. But I'm going to remove this equal sign and I'm going to leave this as a mistake because it's not going to run properly. I'm going to copy these lines of code and go back to ChatGPT. And I'm going to add this as a new input. And without providing any prompts, it's going to figure out that there is actually a mistake. So let's see actually, oh, I think it didn't actually catch it this time. So I'm going to write another prompt. And I'm just going to say, can you fix the code to see what it says? Let's write this. Can you fix the code? Sure. My apologies for the confusion earlier. So that's good because it's going to learn from its mistake. Function is prime and it's going to fix it. You know that now we've got the right input, the right output. Excellent. OK, so now it says that with this correction, the function should now correctly identify whether a number is prime. Excellent. So now you know what is a prime number. You know how to check if a number is prime. 
with a function written in JavaScript, and you know also how to explain it. Data structure is a fundamental concept of programming. So what is a data structure? So let's ask ChatGPT. I'm going to write explain data structure. And the output says that it is a particular way of organizing and storing data in a computer so that it can be accessed and modified efficiently. And common data structures include arrays, objects, sets, maps, linked lists, and also hash tables. And here, this is great because based on a single text input, ChatGPT is able to provide us with an informative and detailed answer. And we're going to run a few examples next. In the next demonstration, we're going to use real-world examples of data structures to organize and manipulate the data. So if you are a complete beginner, you can count on ChatGPT to learn and understand the fundamentals of data structures in JavaScript. And for an expert, it is an opportunity for you to learn ways to write efficient code whenever you manipulate lots of data in your program. And so the next exercise is to find the smallest value in an array. So we're going to ask ChatGPT to help us with this task. Find the smallest value in an array. So first, the output will be written in Python, but that's OK. We can ask ChatGPT to convert the code in JavaScript, convert in JS. We're just going to wait for here that it stops generating. And next, we can hit Enter. And we're going to be able to read the equivalent of this function in JavaScript. So we're going to get a few examples next. So it is telling us that this is the equivalent version of Python, followed by an explanation, and another example right below with MathMin. So let's go back to the first output. And this one is pretty interesting because this is explaining to us how to find the smallest value in an array with a simple loop. So this example, it's going to run in sequence, meaning that it's going to assume that the first element is the smallest. Then it's going to iterate over the array and make a comparison to check if the current element is smaller than the current minimum value. And then it's going to return the smallest one. So it's going to do that until it finds the smallest value. So this example is perfectly fine, as long as the array is small. But imagine that you have to deal with thousands of data. This would take forever to run. So next, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to optimize this code. Optimize the code. There we go. Let's see the output. So it's going to tell us that this is already quite efficient and that this is running with a time complexity of O of n. And this is an important concept to understand. And just in case, it is giving us another solution with reduce, which could be also interesting. Also, it is important to keep in mind that searching a dataset requires an expensive computational time meaning that the time for execution of the program increases with the size of the input. And here the challenge is to find the best algorithm with the calculation of time complexity in mind. So what is time complexity? So the best is to ask ChatGPT. We're going to ask for a definition. What is time complexity? And time complexity is a concept in computer science that deals with the amount of time taken by a set of code or if functions to run. And time complexity is usually expressed by using the big O notation. And here is a list of some common time complexities from the fastest to the slowest. Right in the middle, you've got here linear time complexity that corresponds to the first example that we have seen. And so I'm going to ask, actually, because I know that's the fastest is this one. So I'm going to ask here, I'm going to ask, given a large data set, find the smallest value with a constant time complexity. Rephrase. Let's see what it finds.
Well, the difficulty, the challenge here is that it obviously needs to iterate over a large data set and that it needs to compare to the elements. So instead, I'm going to ask the exact same question. So let's go back. And this time I'm going to ask, given a large data set, find the smallest value with a linear time complexity. Let's change that at least. ChatGPT is giving us like all the possibilities so we can understand what we can do and what we cannot do. Let's try that. Okay, so here as well, it's going to give us a solution with a time complexity of O of n, meaning that the time for execution will be based on the n number of elements in the input, based on the size of the input. So we've got this solution that we're going to try. Let's go to GS Fiddle to try that. And we're going to try this example, which is find smallest. And I'm going to put a large data set inside of it. I'm going to say, I'm going to say two, four, five, eighty-nine, two, one, right in the middle that I know is going to be the smallest, 94. Let's run. And then it was able to return to me like the smallest value, which I know is one. Excellent. So common sorting algorithm include bubble, selection sort, and also merge and quick sort. So which one should we use when we need to deal with a large amount of data? So the best is to ask again ChatGPT. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to provide with a list of the most common sorting algorithm. I'm never sure about the spelling, so I'm just going to run it and ChatGPT is going to be able to figure out my question. And here we go. The answer, first bubble sort, which is a straightforward solution because the process is to swipe and compare values until it finds the smallest. However, it is not really efficient with a large data set because it requires to iterate over every element, compare and swap, and repeat the same operation until the array is sorted and that you find the smallest value. And so the worst case time complexity for this one is if the array is not sorted meaning that the size of the input will be n square, which is described as quadratic time complexity. So for example, if you have 10 elements in an array, you're going to need 100 operations in the worst case scenario. So instead, I want a solution with a time complexity which grows slowly, regardless of the size of the input. So what I'm going to ask next is to find the smallest value in a large data set with the fastest. So I know that ChatGPT is going to be able to actually give me the fastest, which is possible based on what I need to perform with the fastest time complexity. Let's see what it says. Let's see what's the best solution. So it's telling us that the best solution is to iterate over every item, but just one time. Okay. So it's giving us the solution again in Python, find the smallest, which I think can be good. Okay. At least we understand what's best. So next I'm going to ask to convert this in JavaScript in GS. Let's see. And actually it's giving us also like the worst case scenario, but also the best case scenario, just in case you need to run this operation one time. So that's good as well. So let's convert in JavaScript. So the same algorithm, but in JavaScript this time. And I think it's very similar to what we had before. So I know that we can trust that we've got the best answer that we can use for our next program, for our applications next. So that's great. So not only is ChatGPT useful to explain and resolve programming problems from basics to complex, it is also an excellent tool to learn and help you implement the most suitable solution for your projects and applications. In this part, we look at a sample of common programming questions asked during coding interviews. And for this challenge, I'll give you three exercises to resolve. First, searching words in a text. Second, given a sentence, reverse the order of the words. Finally, given an array, find and remove the duplicates. So I would say that the two first questions have a level of difficulty, which is average. And the last one is a bit tricky. But anyway, you have ChatGPT to help you. And my recommendations to complete the next challenge are to write specific and detailed instructions to optimize the results, 
but it is also important to be able to understand the generated code. So remember that ChatGPT is good at teaching concepts of programming. And I'm going to stress again that ChatGPT was trained on a large collection of data and millions of lines of code. So you can ask ChatGPT plenty of questions to explain concepts to you. You can also include examples based on a text input and code snippets in your prompt. ChatGPT is capable of figuring out what you're aiming for. Finally, it is good to keep in mind the big annotations to measure the efficiency of your algorithm. Good luck. For this challenge, the first exercise to resolve is to search words in a text. So let's head to ChatGPT to ask search words in a text in JavaScript. We're going to specify JavaScript. Okay, and it's going to give us a first example with includes, another one with index of, and also those two solutions are case sensitive. So if you need to do case insensitive, we need to use to lowercase looks like. So this is giving us this solution. So I'm going to use this one. And we're going to try this example with a GS fiddle. Let's save and we're going to run it to see. So the word welcome was found in the text. So this is working just fine. And if we try like welcome, you see like this is cap letters. I'm going to try with a mix of lowercase and cap letters to see if it still works because this solution should be case insensitive, which is fine. Perfect. So next we're going to ask ChatGPT if you can actually write a function to search occurrences of words in a text just to see like if this is outputting something different. Okay, so this time this is giving me this solution with regular expressions. So it will count the number of times the word welcome appears in the text. And so it looks like this is interesting. I'm going to copy the code and also try this one. Let's try here. And I'm going to save. And oh, looks like here it is repeated twice. So it's telling me that the word is found, but also it's giving me the number of times that the word is found in the text. So that's great. So because I'm also looking at the best solution, so I'm going to ask what is the time complexity for the last solution. We're going to ask as well because it is important. The time complexity for the solution is using match is O of N, meaning that this is based on the size of the text string of the input. So time of execution will be based on the size of the input, which I think is fine. So I'm just going to ask, is there a better solution based on a large, I'm going to say a large text like yeah, let's see what it says. So it's telling me that the previous solution is quite efficient because it traverses the text once, which results in a time complexity of O of N, which is in the best case scenario. Let's go back. It can do for such tasks that involve searching and reading through an entire text. Okay, so at least we have the best solution. So let's look at the other question, which is to reverse words in a sentence. So this time I'm going to say, given a sentence, reverse words, words. To reverse the order of words in a sentence in JavaScript, you can use split. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward. So you need to use first split to create an array, then reverse the elements in the array and then join again, put the words back into the sentence and then return the results. Excellent. So next I'm going to ask to actually write the same solution by chaining the methods. Let's see what it says. 
So it's a matter of preference. Some people prefer to have lines of code that are compact. So for this example, we have now a more compact version of the function. So we chain the methods of split, reverse, and join in order to get the exact same result. So let's try it. I'm going to copy this code and go to gsfiddle and try it. And word welcome, word my welcome to hello. Hello, welcome to my word. OK, so this is working just fine. Excellent. And very often, as a developer, we spend time rewriting, refactoring the code. And it may take some time to rewrite, test, and run our code just to improve the quality. And here, the benefit is that it took just a few seconds and one text input to refactor this entire function. So this is great. Thanks to ChatGPT. The last exercise is to remove the duplicates in an array. So let's see how we can achieve that by using ChatGPT again. So I'm going to write. And I'm going to be very specific, write an optimized function to remove duplicates in an array. Let's try that. And I'm going to specify also in JavaScript. OK, so this is telling us that the most simple way to proceed to achieve this result is to use the data structure sets because a set will return only unique values. Because a set object in JavaScript allows to organize and store unique values in a data structure. And if you don't know what set means, we're going to ask, what is set? Can you explain? Just in case. In JavaScript, a set is a built-in object that stores unique values of any type, whether primitive or object references. So that's excellent. So now we've got the solution. We're going to take this and try another GS Fiddle. And in this example, you see that we have several duplicates. We have twice two. We have twice as well three. So let's run this one. We're going to run, and it should return a new array with unique values only. So it has successfully removed all the duplicates in that array. So congrats for taking this challenge. So you can keep going and keep learning. And there are plenty of other coding interview questions that you can have fun resolving with ChatGPT. Now the most interesting part, how to use ChatGPT to write code. In the next example, we want to generate and display data on a web page. For example, display a list of the top 10 applications. So I'm going to start by asking ChatGPT to display a list of the top 10 web applications. OK, so first, this is reminding us that there is a limit. So until the time that the models, the language models were trained. So this is first giving us a reminder of this limitation. And you can see that in this list, you don't see OpenNI yet. It's not showing up yet. OK, so the first one is Google, followed by the applications of YouTube and Facebook. But actually, what I need is to have the possibility to display this list of data in a table on the web page. And I want to display also the number of users. I'm going to write another prompt, which is to create, create an HTML page to display the list of data with the number of users. So I'm going to add this information, the number of users. Okay, so let's see. So it's giving me the HTML structure and also the CSS. And actually, I don't need to, I don't think that I want to hard code the data. So instead, I'm going to ask JGPT to create a script to have a separate HTML page and a script separate to manage the data. So I'm going to write another prompt, which is create a separate script in JavaScript to manipulate the data. And we're going to say attach the data to a node with an ID, a unique identifier. 
so an HTML element. So we're just gonna add this, okay. So that is pretty good so far anyway. So I'm gonna copy this for the moment to have the HTML structure. So that is the starting point. Let's go to GS Fiddle to add this code. And I'm gonna remove this because instead I'd like to manage all the data by using a JavaScript script. So let's go back to ChatGPT and see the output. Here we go. So it looks like we have here this script. So now we have this element with an ID, which is app data. I'm gonna copy those two first lines and add to my HTML and replace all of this. Here we go. And now I'm gonna use this script to manage the data. Let's see how it goes. And it should show right here. So, but the table is missing. Let's see, app data and the JavaScript. And I think that I am missing, unfortunately, a few lines of code. So let's go back to ChatGPT. Oh, looks like there was an error. So let's go back to regenerate the answer again to have the entire script this time. So that's for the data. So let's copy this and go back here. So I think it's gonna be the same to define the data. Let's go back to have the script. So I'm just gonna wait for it to finish and I'm gonna copy this and then go back. So that's gonna be generated on load here. And get element by ID, I need to replace this ID because it's different now. So we just need to be careful and here we go. So now you have your table displaying the list of the top 10 applications with the number of users. So what's left to do here? So that is pretty good. What we're gonna do next is to add some interactivity. So what I'd like is to add buttons to allow to sort the applications based on the number of users from the fewest to the highest number of users. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to add buttons. Let's go back. So now I want to add interactivity. So I'm gonna say now, you can actually describe what you want. I want to add interactivity and add buttons to sort based on the number of users. And I'm gonna add also add buttons to sort with, with the most users. I would say most users and fewest users. So let's see, fewest users. Let's try that. All right, to do this, you need to add some interactivity with JavaScript again. So it's gonna provide me with the HTML to create the two buttons. Let's see. So now we have a new HTML, so not much of a difference. So I just need to copy those two lines that we see here, right here. So I'm gonna copy this, all of this. And it added also the header, so the table with title headers for the table. So let's copy all of this and go back to the HTML page. First, we're gonna add this, and then we need to go back. So you can already see the buttons, so that's great. Here we go. And let's go back and also look at the scripts. Okay, the script that should be updated. And we have here, so actually this is different. So I need to copy the whole thing again and make sure that this is without any mistake. Okay, so let's try that. So it looks like we are missing now the data. So let's go back. I'm just gonna go back and make sure that I copy just what I need. So this is the tricky part sometimes. So I'm just gonna take this which is get elements by ID with app stable. And I think, okay, let's copy again. And I'm just gonna make sure that this is, oh, here we go. So it was just taking some time and here we go. So now you've got this table with titles, with applications, the number of users. You can sort by the most users. I mean, 
with the highest number of users and the fewest users. Okay, so that's great. So what we could do next is to change the appearance of this table. So for that, we're going to use some CSS. So let's do that next. We have successfully created a page to display a list of the top 10 applications that include social media platforms and other websites that we can rank based on the number of users, like so. So let's break this down a bit. So, so far we have an HTML page, which is pretty straightforward, and the script. So first we start with the data set. Then we have a script, a function, which is used to convert users to numbers. Then we build the table. So we create it from scratch by making an iteration to create the rows and the cell. Then we attach the table to one node by using this unique ID. And finally, we display this on load, on page load. And we also have the logic used to sort the data based on the number of users, which is on click for this button. So what we want to do next is to change the appearance of this page. For that, we're going to use some CSS, but we're not going to write the CSS ourselves. Basically, we're going to describe what we need, and we're going to ask ChatGPT to generate the CSS that we're going to paste right here. And I'm going to add also a title, but that is something that I could do myself. Actually, I'm going to use the same right here and add an H1 right here. Okay, we're gonna add this extra. Okay, excellent. So let's go back to ChatGPT to make some requests. So first we're gonna ask, write CSS. I'm gonna add a container with a width of 60%. And I wanna center this container. I want to also add a background color, which is light. So ChatGPT is going to just generate an hexadecimal code to add a background color, but light. And I'm going to say also that I need to alternate color of the rows. So we're going to have different colors for the rows just to make them stand out. And we're going to style the buttons with Bootstrap. We're going to say Bootstrap with, I'm going to specify primary and success because these are utility CSS classes that we use with Bootstrap to change the appearance of buttons. It's pretty well known. Primary and success. So I think it's enough. I'm just going to hit enter and see what it says. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to need to add this to have access to the resources of Bootstrap. I'm going to let it finish generating. Okay, so that's almost done. So I'm going to use this, go back to GS Fiddle and add this in the head section right here. So that is for the bootstrap. You can see already that the appearance has changed because now we're using the CSS from the bootstrap library. And we need to grab also the other CSS in order to format the container. And we're going to need to add, I think, another node with here, this class container, and this class as well for the buttons. So I'm going to need to, again, copy this in order to change the HTML structure. Let's go back, I'm going to find the HTML, and it's going to be included now inside a div with a class of container. Let's go back again, and this time we're going to copy the CSS lines for the CSS. Copy. So I just need this part and I'm just going to tidy like this. And I think it's enough. So I have twice top web applications. So I'm going to remove one like this. We don't need top 10 web applications. Here we go. And let's see that with a full width. Excellent. So now we have a table, the same table, but now which is formatted by using some CSS and also bootstrap. So that's great. This is when ChatGPT comes in very handy because we can ask ChatGPT for help for any task. It is true that for this web project, we didn't have to start from scratch and we didn't write a single lines of code. Whether you don't know where to start or if you feel stuck in your project, ChatGPT can give you a good head start and give you a boost. On top of ChatGPT's dialogue abilities, it can remember previous inputs. 
And ChatGPT uses also reinforcement learning from human feedback to train the language models. So for example, if you find one answer helpful and correct, you can always give feedback. So for example, I'm going to provide a feedback for this one, which I think is very useful. I'm going to give a thumbs up. You can also provide with additional feedback if you'd like. I'm just going to hit submit feedback. Here you go. So this will help train the models to deliver more accurate, efficient, and personalized answers as we progress. ChatGPT is a powerful tool that can assist developers during the coding process. And good practices include to provide detailed instructions with example, context, and also give feedback. So some things to keep in mind also is to always use your good judgments when using AI-generated outputs. ChatGPT is very helpful for web developers, but it is unlikely that it will replace the talent and creativity of developers anytime soon. As developers, it is up to you to apply good practices and use ChatGPT responsibly. In any case, ChatGPT is here to provide you with the best developer experience. It is a real-time saver and a game changer. By helping reducing development time and costs, it helps boost and accelerate productivity and improve the developer experience.
We have. In this module, we build web applications by using ChatGPT. And the first example that we create is a tool to generate secure and strong passwords, which is essential to protect the access to your personal information. So let's go to ChatGPT and we're going to ask, create a password generator in JavaScript. Okay, so it's going to give us first the code snippet and then an explanation as to how to use it, followed by an example. So we need to call this function generate password and then specify the length, I believe, yeah, the length, include lowercase, include uppercase. So we just need to use those parameters as settings, so the way that we want the password to be generated. And final step, we're going to console log the password. So it is also telling us that this is not the perfect answers, but this is a starting point and there is room for improvement. So let's begin by copying this code snippet. We're going to GS Fiddle. Let's go back and also copy the example, like so. And I think that we need to console. Yeah, we need to have a look at the console. So we're going to run it in the console. So we're going to say generate password. What we're going to do is add this console log inside the function so we can console log the results. And we're going to make the test in the console like this. So I'm going to say that I'd like to generate a password with a length with 10 characters. So I'm going to hit enter. Here we go. So now I've got my very strong and secure password. So that's great. So the next part is to ask ChatGPT to create a view, an interface. So I'm going to go ahead and ask ChatGPT to create an HTML page to generate and display passwords. Let's see what it says. As said before, ChatGPT remembers the last inputs. So the code is being generated based on the previous and last inputs. So the HTML page will be connected to the previous scripts. So we're going to be able to connect actually. So we have a few elements to create a form. And underneath we have the corresponding scripts. And here we have the ID password. And this is where it's going to be generated actually. And I think that for this, I can keep the scripts separately. So I'm going to copy all of this and add to the HTML like this. There we go. So here you have the results. So you can say that you want to include the lowercase letters, etc. And finally, click generate password. But for the script, I'd like to keep it separate. I'm going to take all of this from line 24 to the end. And I think we have some stuff missing. Let me check. Let me go back. 
Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I take everything, so the entire script, from here all the way to generate, like so. And we're going to go to the script, like this, and we're going to just click tidy. If we compare like here, I'm going to remove the script. I don't need to use this right here. And make sure that we close the body. So we have the generate function and the ID password. So if we go there, so let's just check. We have generate password, generate here. And if we do generate password so we can generate successfully, we can also specify that we want only lowercase, for example. Only numbers, maybe, but that's very unlikely. So I'm just going to put back all these settings, so specifications, and we're going to generate again. So maybe I'd like to have a password, which is with a length of 20. So very secure, very strong. And here you go. So we can break this down a bit just to understand. So first you have your functions and you have different variables to define the type of characters. So from line two to nine, the characters that you want to include in the passwords. And from line 10 to 24, you define so the specifications as to whether you want to include lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and symbols. After that, you make an iteration. And finally, you return the password, which will be displayed in this node right here. Excellent. So the thing that you can do, if you wish, you know, here you have a loop, you could ask ChatGPT, you know, to replace with a while loop. So I'm going to let you do this. If you'd like to refactor or rewrite the code, you can always ask ChatGPT. So now this is complete and it took us less than 10 minutes to create and complete this project to create a tool to generate secure and strong passwords. In this video, recreate a simple breakout game written in pure JavaScript. The game is Breakout Ball, inspired by the famous Breakout arcade video game. Originally released in 1976, the game was designed by Steve Wozniak, developed and published by Atari, and it is very similar to the design of the Pong game. So in this game, you have a layer of bricks lines on the top third of the screen, and the goal is to destroy them by repeatedly hit them by bouncing a ball off a paddle. So I found this step-by-step -step tutorial online that teaches you how to build the game in 10 steps. And so first you create and draw the canvas. Step two and three, you move the ball and you create the bounce of the walls by detecting the collision. Step four, you create the paddle and add the controls to move it left and right. Then step five, this is the game over in the case that you missed the ball and that it falls off the screen. Next steps, six and seven, you take care of the brick fields and collision detection. And finally, last, you track the score and the win and the mouse controls. So that's an interesting way of building this breakout game. So this would take anywhere between, I don't know, one or two hours to build it. But instead, we're going to try to build it by using ChatGPT. So let's go to ChatGPT and our first prompt will be write a code in JavaScript and HTML. I'm going to specify that we need also an HTML page to create, to create a 2D game, breakout game. Let's see. Okay, so it looks like this is generating a simple version of the breakouts by using vanilla JavaScript and HTML. So first the HTML, we have the canvas, so I draw the canvas with the width and the height, 480 by 320. And below we have the scripts in order to design the game of the breakout ball. So I'm going to start by the HTML. I'm going to copy the code and go to JS Fiddle. And we start with the HTML page. And we should see here the canvas here on this window. Uh, let's minimize here the console and let's go back. And I think it has just finished generating the response with the JavaScript. So we're going to copy it. 
And basically what it's doing is that it creates the canvas that refers to the node with the game canvas ID. Then it creates and draw the canvas with the context, which is 2D. It creates, defines the ball, it defines the paddle, the controls also to allow the movement. And also it creates the lines of bricks, which is an array. So it's going to make an iterations to display the lines of bricks and also the listeners to allow the movement. So this is the utils functions in order to move the paddle left and right. And we also have the logics to detect collision, draw the ball, draw the paddle, draw the bricks, and finally draw the whole thing like so. And it's going to start with, we're going to have an interval of 10 in order to redraw the whole thing. So let's copy the whole thing and paste back in JS Fiddle in JavaScript. And here we go. So that was pretty quick. Let's see if I take this. Oh, and it is game over very quickly because I'm not very quick. So for this game over alert, I think it's annoying. This is blocking the view and it's going to force me to every time hit this in order to start. So we don't have time enough to actually start the game. So I'm going to go back to ChatGPT and say, instead of the game over alert, add a heading with a title game over and add a button to start the game again. So when this is game over, it's going to stop and then we're going to have the options to start again the game. So let's give this instructions again and it's going to generate so here is a modified version of the HTML and the script. So I'm going to need to copy again. Okay, as soon as this is done. So we have the start game that we have requested. So let's copy this. Let's go back to the HTML page. Here we go. I'm going to save. Go back to get the scripts as well. Okay, so this is giving us an explanation. So instead of the game automatically starting when the page loads, it's going to start when the start button is clicked. Excellent. So this is what we have requested. So let's copy the new code and go back to GS Fiddle and save. And this time we're going to have the options to start the game, which is going to give us enough time to get started. I'm not sure that this is working just fine. So let's go back to make sure that we got the right thing. So what we were supposed to do instead of copying the whole thing is just that we had to add the extra code inside the logic that was already available. So let's go back and fix this. I'm just going to go back one step before. Okay. And go back to how it was. And then here, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write the full code again. Write the full JavaScript with the changes, including the start again. So it should understand. So what I need is the complete script. We're going to see if it understands. So certainly here is the full updated JavaScript code, including the requested changes. So this is better. So we're going to wait for the complete code to be generated, and then we're going to be ready. Here we go. So now this is finished and it is explaining that the code will now display a game over message when the game is lost and the game will be restarted by clicking the start game button. So this is exactly what we need. So let's go to the top to find the copy button. Copy code. We go to GS Fiddle, replace this code with the new one. Here we go. And let's see the results then. So I should start the game. Okay. Okay. So it looks like now I can play it. Excellent. Game over very quick. But anyway, this is working just fine. So the thing that you can do to improve this game is certainly to allow to track the score and the number of lives. 
excellence. The next project and challenge will be to create a RESTful API. And for that, you're going to use Node.js and Express.js, which is a Node framework. And the goals are to set up a new server by using the Express framework, create the endpoints in order to create the RESTful API. Then you're going to test the endpoints by using the application Postman. So now this is your turn. But remember that you're not on your own. You can chat with ChatGPT to ask for help. Good luck. Now we are creating a RESTful API and we're going to build this together and with ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and write a first prompt, which is going to be create an API. I'm not going to be more specific. I'm going to see the output. So it's going to start with a definition. And it's going to start with a first example of Python and Flask, but I don't need this to be in Python. And instead, I'm going to write create an API using Express and Node, a simple API. I'm going to specify a simple API, like so. So the first requirement will be to have the latest copy of Node installed on your machine. So we're going to see the first instructions, which is first to create a new directory, a new folder, create a package JSON, install Express, which is a node framework. And while this is working, we're going to go to the code editor because I am providing you with instructions, which is to create first a directory, then create a package JSON and the index.js, where we're going to set up the server. So let's do that. So we're going to do npm init dash y to create the package JSON. Next, we're going to install Express. Next, we create an index.js, which will be the entry point of this server. And this is where we're going to write the code to define the server and create the API. So let's go back to ChatGPT to get the rest of the instructions. So first uh, here, so we have already done this part, which is to create a directory, the package JSON, it is done. We have installed Express. Next, we're going to copy this code snippet. Let's go back to here, the project, and we're going to break this down. So here we have, we add to the scope Express, we create an instance of Express, and we have this array to manage the data. And next we define the routes to create the API. So we have one to display the items, one to display one unique item, another one with the post method to create a new object and add to the array. And for this one, I'm going to choose to actually handle it differently. I'm just going to say request body because I'm not sure which attributes I'd like to provide. It should have an ID, a title, and also a property completed, which is going to be a Boolean. Next, we have a route to update the to-do that we target here in the endpoint. And for this one, actually, I'm going to update differently, which is item It's going to be completed. And I'm just going to change actually the value because it's going to be a Boolean. So I'm going to choose to update this one by just marking if this is completed or not. And finally, we have the route which is used to delete the items. So we're going to test this API, and actually I'm going to make a quick test, which is just to read the root, a simple welcome message. I'm going to say welcome to the API, and we're going to run it. It's going to be with node index.js. And once we can read this, so let me actually change the port because I'm going to change this to 4,000. So that's okay for now. We can just use 3,000, but that's going to be for the next step. Okay, so now we can read welcome to the API. So next we want to test the other routes. And for that, we're going to use Postman. So we're going to copy this and we're going to test the route. It's going to be this one first. And next we want to test with the to-dos. Let's try it. So actually, I think that this is a different name. Let's go back. It's items, my bad. So that should be items. So I'm going to change this to with the right endpoints. And for now, this is an empty array. 
let's try to add a new element and it's going to be in the body. We're going to go to row and that's going to be in JSON format. So we're going to add a title. I'm going to say new item and we don't have, I think we are dealing with unique identifiers. I'm not sure. Yes, we do. Okay. That's great. And next I'm going to add another property, which is going to be completed. And this one is going to be false. It's going to be new item one. We're going to run and let's try another one. We're going to run and here you go. Oh, actually it cannot work because we haven't updated with the right methods. Let me update it to post. And this time we're going to try again. Here we go. And we're going to try a second time to add another item. Here we go. And if you try to get again, we should be able to see the full list. Next, we're going to try to update one item. So I'm going to try to update the second one with the ID two, and I'm going to choose this method, which is put, and that should change to true. Excellent. If we do get, we should be able to see the complete list and this one, the second one, which is set to true. And next I'm going to do another example with delete and delete the first item with the ID one. We're going to test that and this item has been deleted. So that's great. And if we try to display the full list, we should be able to visualize the complete list, but just the one now, because we have deleted one of the list. So this is working just fine. Excellent. And all of that, thanks to the help of ChatGPT. What I'd like to do next is to create an interface in order to manage and display the to-dos. Previously, we have successfully created a RESTful API. Now we want to create a client application and we're going to ask ChatGPT to create a client side React application. And I am providing you with a few more instructions for the API. So we're using course and also Nodmon. And course is to allow to handle requests from different origins because now we're going to handle the requests, the API calls from the client React application. And we are using also Nodmon, which is a utility application to restart the server automatically whenever there is a change in the GS file. So for example, if you make any change right here, so we're going to open the console. You see that it's going to restart the server automatically. So you don't need to stop and start manually the server whenever you make a change in the file. So let's look at the few changes that we've made. So whenever I change an item to the list, I'd rather return here the full list. And I'm going to do the same also for whenever I delete an items of the list, I'm going to choose to return the full list, the complete list of items. So based on that, we're going to ask ChatGPT to create a React application for us. So let's go back. I'm going to paste this code and send. And here ChatGPT is going to notice that it is an updated version of the previous code. So it could notice the change that first we are using course this time. Also for the unique ID, so I'm choosing to generate a unique ID by using this new date that I convert into a number and same for this one. So based on that, I'm going to ask create a React application to manage and display the data with this API. Okay, so first this is giving us some instructions as to how to create a React app. And next, this is telling us to install Axios to make API requests. And next we have the code. So we're gonna start with this line, so this script. And we're gonna go right here. So I'm gonna open a new terminal and I'm gonna run this and I'd rather call this one app. And we're gonna wait until it finishes creating the new React application. Okay, so now we have a new app ready. We're going to navigate to it, which is app. And let's check this one out inside. You're going to see that in order to start the app, you just need to run npm start. So this is what we're going to do, npm start. And this is going to start the server and then open a new window. And here you go. So this is how every new React project looks like. And we're going to change that because now we have this code which has been provided by ChatGPT. So basically what we have is a few state variables to organize and store the data. And then we have a fetch items. 
And we're going to run first this endpoint in order to get the list of items from the API. And we also have another endpoint to add a new item. And here we can change to title. We're going to see next. And we can then update here. And to complete, also, we have this one and handle delete. OK, so let's copy the whole thing. And we're going to replace this code, which is the starter code for every new app. So we're going to find the root components right here. We're going to highlight and then do paste. Let's try this one out. And we're going to make sure that our app is still up and running, of course. Oh, and I need to install Axios as well. So this is part of the requirements. We're going to install this library in order to make API calls. OK, so once this is complete, we're going to run again with npm start. OK, so now we've got our new interface. And we're going to open the console just to have a visibility every time that we make an API call. So that's going to be visible under the tab network. I'm going to go ahead and create a new item just to test it. New item. And click Add Item. So this is working just fine. And if I click on one item, I can cross this one off the list. I'm going to add another one, new item two, and I can also delete items off the list. So this is working just fine. So we have been able to create an API and also to use this API in our React application. It is no secret that many developers hate CSS. Let's see how we can make the process less painful by using ChatGPT. So right now, the interface is pretty bland. There is no color, no styling. So we're going to ask ChatGPT to help us change the appearance of this application by using CSS. And we have the last input from last time. So we could use the exact same input, meaning that we're going to simply write and request, write the CSS to change the appearance of the application and make it look good. So we are expressing it in the way that we want to proceed and also the goal that we want to achieve. So let's press enter. And so it's telling us that, sure, here's some basic ESS to change the appearance of the React application in order to make it visually appealing. So that's great. So that's exactly the request and the goal that we want to achieve. OK, and this is also telling us that we're going to need to import app CSS. So let's try that. We're going to add all this code inside our application. So that's going to be here in app.css. And let's not forget also to import to add this one to the scope of our application so it can actually work like this app CSS. Let's go back and refresh. And here it is. OK, so that's already pretty good. So I'd like to make a few changes still. So next, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to reduce, to minimize the width, for example, 60%, and to position the list at the center of the viewport. And I'm going to ask it also to use Bootstrap. It looks like this is already using it. So I think it's fine. So that's going to be just an extra option. So I'm going to write ChatGPT to write the CSS to add a container with a width of 60%, then center, and center and center the list, the list on X and Y, meaning that we want the list to be right in the middle of the viewport on the horizontally and vertically on the X and Y axis. 
And what else could we do? Let's go back. We want to change the button, so I'm going to ask change the color of the buttons with change the color with a lighter one. I'm going to say with a lighter one. It's going to understand lighter one. What else could we do? Okay, so the input. Okay, so we're going to start with that. So we're going to get new CSS. Sure, here is the updated CSS to add a container with a width of 60%, center it and center the list on both the X and Y axis. Additionally, the CSS changes the color of the buttons to a lighter shade. Okay, so that's great. So let's copy this new code and go back to the source code and replace. And we're going to see how this looks. Okay, so actually what I'm missing is because we're adding a new container, I need to also replace the HTML because I think that now we need to wrap the whole thing within a div with the class container. So let's go back to the app component and we're going to add here class name and then container. And that's going to do the trick. Here we go. And I'm going to do that manually. ChatGPT has done the legwork. So we can then add here something like margin top and add some margin like not too much, but something like this in order to add some space like from the edge, between the edge and the list. Okay, so this is looking good. Delete, let's try. Okay, so we can cross the item of the list. And for the delete button, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to change the color. I'm gonna say, change the color of the delete button to a red. And the add item button to a green. Let's finish with those two additional requests. Okay, so it understands that we need to update the CSS to change the color of the button delete to red and green for the add item button. So that's great. Let's copy here and go back. We can see that we have these additional classes that are new. So we're going to need to update also the root component accordingly with the new classes, delete button and add button. So let's do that. So now we have here the add item button. So I'm going to add this class and this is add btn. And same for the delete button. We're going to add the class right here and that's going to be delete btn. Excellent. I think that this is going to look pretty great. And we've done that in less than 10 minutes. Excellent. And to add to my list, I'm going to say that I want to improve my skills in CSS with chat GPT. Excellent. And we can already cross this one off the list because we are halfway through. We are on the right path. So this is the end of the full stack applications project built entirely with ChatGPT, which was the perfect example of how to use ChatGPT for web development. And we can count on ChatGPT to help during the entire project. We can all agree that this is a real time saver and a game changer. Prompt engineering is a concept of creating effective prompts by including questions or instructions in natural language to direct the behavior and production of the AI models. And fine tuning is used to customize the model with its own data on a specific domain. And here is a definition of prompt engineering provided by ChatGPT that, as a reminder, was trained up to the year 2021. So, my understanding is that by this time, the concept was not fully established and it was not considered yet as a standard usage in the huge ecosystem of generative AI. Indeed, prompt engineering is a new discipline for fine-tuning prompts to use language models efficiently and produce better results. And the discipline is growing quickly. In this video, we look at effective techniques to improve the capacities of language models and get the best results from generative AI. So let's look at the instruction that you can find on the official website by OpenNI, and you need to authenticate in order to access this page. So here you're gonna find on this quick start guide, introduction, you're going to find instructions as to how you can write a prompt. 
to interact with a language model. So first, to write a prompt, you need to start with instructions that you can combine with examples and also provide context when necessary. Plus, you have the options to adjust the settings to control the behavior and the output of the language model. So prompt engineering is the art of stimulating and activating the system to its full potential. And here in this blog, we have a list of recommendations on how to write effective prompts with examples of good and better prompts and with less effective ones. For example, by looking at point eight, for code generation specifics. So when you want ChatGPT to write functions, it is good practice to direct the language models with hints, like this example by adding imports in your prompt to indicate the model that you want the outputs to be written in Python. And we're gonna look at one example. For the previous demonstrations, we have built a password generator and also a 2D game. And we have also requested ChatGPT to write CSS for us. So the language model like ChatGPT is already trained on millions of lines of code. So one single line of prompt is enough to get the results expected. Of course, it is good practice to write your prompts with clear and detailed instructions depending on the goal and the use cases. So to design a prompt, you're gonna to need to provide with clear and detailed instructions that you can combine with examples, provide context if necessary, and adjust the settings in order to control the output in order to create variations if you'd like between the results. And this will also help reinforce the training and capacities of the model through learning in one shot or more. This is what we call zero, one, and few shots learning, which is the ability for the deep learning based language models to learn on the fly with the new information given. One shot is when the language model relies on previous data learned. One shot means that one input and one example is enough to predict and generate data generate content, and few shots requires more examples to direct the language model on the desired outputs. So we're going to take this example, and I'm going to take you from here, so from this platform to the playground, built in on the OpenNI platform. And this is something that anyone can use. First, you're going to need to authenticate in order to be able to use this platform and this playground in order to test it. And here I am providing you with some instructions, and this is very similar to what we have built before, when we have created a password generator by using JavaScript. So let's take this text, but first what we're gonna do, we're gonna tell the language model how to behave. Right here you have a dialog box, and this is where you're gonna indicate how you want the language model to behave in order to direct and control the outputs. So let's go back. So first, I'm going to tell the language model to act as an experienced developer. Next, I'm going to provide instructions as to what I want as a result. So I'm going to add a message and add this message for the bot. And let's hit submit. So while this is being outputted, generated, I'm going to open a JS Fiddle. So we're going to be able to run this code, which is being generated by the system. And this is also followed by an explanation. So let's go to the top and copy from here, which is the start of the HTML document, right here, all the way here to the bottom. And we're going to just fiddle and paste this right here. We're gonna save and run it. Excellent. So now we have a fully functional password generator application, which is working. So we can here specify the number of characters that we want and generate a new strong password. So now I'm sure that you're gonna to want to take a stab at building games with ChatGPT as well, because previously we have built a 2D game, so you can certainly use the same way of writing prompts in order to create fully functional games. So these are good practices to keep in mind, which are to be specific with examples and context to optimize results, train and fine tune the models, and overall to improve the experience with ChatGPT. Knowing how to write good prompts will be useful when we create together a next-gen application powered by artificial intelligence, AI. And this will be the secret to maximize and unlock the full potential of ChatGPT.
Since November 2022, OpenAI provides access to a set of language models with different capacities. In this module, we make an introduction to the APIs, the language models, and the other key concepts of generative AI to understand how the technologies of large language model like ChatGPT work. So let's have a look at the documentation for developers on the official website of OpenAI. Here we're going to find a quick start guide in order to get started quick with the APIs and models. And here we're going to make an introduction to the completions APIs. Getting started with the ChatGPT. To get started with the project, we're going to find instructions under API reference and here chat. So here we're going to see instructions as to how to create a chat completion. And here what you need to do is to define first a request. Inside this request, you're going to find the model. We're going to specify the model endpoints. And the prompt will be a list of messages. So we can see an example request on the right. So first we configure the project with OpenNI with the OpenNI key and recreate an object OpenNI. And from here, we can then generate a completion. So we must specify the model and also the prompt, which will be a list of messages. And from the top, you can select the model and also select the library, which will be the Node.js library for our example. So from here, I can copy this example and go back to my projects. So we're gonna complete it in order to get started. And first we need to configure OpenNI. So this is what we're doing with configuration. And we specify here, so the API key. So this is the only attribute that takes this class. And we create an object. From here, we create an object, which is OpenNI. And finally, we can then create a completion. And for this one, I'm going to copy from line 13 to 20. I'm going to cut and place it right here inside this endpoint, which is the route ask where we're going to define the prompt in order to get a response from the language model. And we're going to start with a system message right here. So you see that for the role, we specify system. And this is to tell the language model how to behave, how to act. So for example, we can say you're a helpful assistant. And so the language model knows which behavior and output is expected from the user. And finally, we're going to output the answer, the completion answer. So this is just to get started. And by the way, if you go back to the documentation, you're going to see an example of a response after sending a request. So what you're going to get is this array choices. Inside, you're going to find the message, the message which is coming from the assistant bot. You can see that the role is assistant. And the message, which is the value of the property content. So let's try that. And in order to test our project, we're going to find instructions on the readme. We're going to use curl in order to send a request. And we're going to specify here the endpoint, which is ask. This is a post, a post request, and also the body that we're going to send with this request, which will be our message to the system, to the language model. And we're just going to say something simple as, hi, this is a test prompt. So I'm going to copy this and go back to the console. I'm going to make sure that my project is up and running. So I'm going to run with npm run start. And I'm going to open a new window, a new terminal. I'm going to go to our current project. And now I'm going to paste this request. And this is going to send a message. Here we go. So now we get the message, which is message, message from the API. Very simple. So let's go back because this time what we want is to actually send this with here message from the API. So this is simple, but the completion, I think it's going to be visible right here, right here. Okay. So this is what I wanted to show you the detail, the details of the response from the API. So we're going to find, I'm going to find right here. So this is, so this should, there should be this array, which is choices right here, which is an object. So this is not detailed, but we're going to see the details actually from here. And I'm going to update this to be completions, data choices, and message. So we're going to copy all of that. Let's go back and I'm going to update here my setup. And I'm going to replace whatever I send back from my request. So that's going to be from this choices. So that's going to be the first element object from this array. And that's going to be the message that we get back from the model, from the bots. 
So let's try that again. But this time what we want is to actually send this. So I'm going to update here my request. So you see that when we test with curl, I'm going to update and send this. And that's going to be this message, which is that says hello world. I'm going to update and we're going to say hello world, something like that. So let's try it. I'm going to say curl. I'm going to run it. Oh, let's start the server again. Let's go back and we're going to run this to see what is the response from the the bot. Hello, how can I assist you today? Perfect. So this is working just fine. OK, so this is a good starting point. So the next step will be to interact with the bot, with the language model from an interface. We have created an API with Express. Now we want to create a client application in order to interact with the language models. And we want to create a React application. For that, for this task, we're going to ask ChatGPT for help. So what I've done is to copy and paste my code right into the chatbot. And based on the source code, ChatGPT was able to analyze the code and provide with a line by line explanation, starting with the libraries that we use in this project. Then it was able to explain also the routes that we have defined. So this ask post method that we use to send and receive messages from the language model. And also it was able to explain what we have inside this route by using this method, which is create chat completion and how to define the models and also the list of messages that we pass along when we send the request to the language model. And so based on that, I've asked ChatGPT to create a React component by using this API. So of course, ChatGPT was able to help by providing first instructions as to how to create a React app so we need to install also Axios in order to make API calls. And finally, it provides the source code to create the chatbot component that we need to make to include inside the root components right here in app.js. So we're going to do that. We're going to follow the instructions from ChatGPT.
So back to the code editor, I have defined a chatbot component and I've made a few changes. And what we need to do to complete here the assignment is first to make reference of the input, so meaning the message that we're going to send to the bot. And then we're going to display the list of messages. So that's going to be displayed on the interface, on the chatbot. So let's see how this looks. So now the app is up and running on the port 3000. So this is the interface of the React app. And I'm going to send a message. So for now, this is just for the demo. This is static content. Oh, well, let me actually update right here. So what I'm going to do is do set messages right here. We're going to do that. And we're going to need to combine the messages along with the new message. So that's going to be the new inputs from the user right here. So let's try that again. We're going to say hello. Here we go. So for now, this is just static content. What we need is to send this message to the language model and then receive a response back from the bot. So we're going to be able then to display the list of messages right here. So let's do that. So now we are making a post request. So what we do is to copy this array and we're going to send this as the body along with the request. So this is to send a list of messages to the language model. Then we're going to get a response back. And for that, from there, we're going to update the list of messages with the response that we get from the API. So that's going to be response data and then messages. And so what I'm going to do next is also to update my API because what we had done so far is just to send back this message. And also we're going to update here because we are using just this example. So what I'm going to do is update here with by taking the body. So whatever is sent as the body of the request, the post request, and we're going to get the messages that we're going to send as a value to messages to send the request to the language model. And this must corresponds to this messages. And actually I'm going to update right here. So that's going to be messages. So that must match. So this will be messages with an S and here as well, this is going to be messages. All right. And after that, we're going to update also the response that we sent right here. So after the request is successful, if the request is successful with the status code of 200, we're going to be able to then send the response and read it from our interface, from the chatbot. So here as well, this is going to be messages and we're going to send this as a list of messages. So that's going to be a request, then body messages and also completion data choices. That's going to be the first element in the array. And finally, message. That's it. So let's try that. What we're going to do is to send our request and to try it, I'm just going to open the console to make sure that the request is going through correctly. And that's going to be under the tab network. I'm going to send hello. Let's go back to network. I'm going to send hello. And looks like it failed. And the reason is because let's go back to console to see the mistake, the error. And let's go back actually to, I'm going to open the console inside right here. And it looks like we're not using the right key. So you got to make sure that you have the API key in order to authorize your request. So I'm going to change this right here. You have this .env example file. I'm going to change this to .env like this. And I'm going to replace this with the API key that we had created earlier. I'm going to find it right here and I'm going to update with this API key so we can authorize the request and be able to interact with the language model. So that should be fine this time. Let's restart the server just in case. So let's go back and go here. I'm going to restart and that should be fine. Let's refresh and start again. We're going in network. I'm going to say hello. And looks like this is going through. Perfect. Now we get a response back that says, hello, how can I assist you today? So that's it for our first next generation application to understand the underlying concepts and technologies that power ChatGPT. And we're just getting started with the future of development with ChatGPT and the language models.
And other language models include the DALI model for image generation and also speech to text to convert voice to text. Then you have Moderation API, which is used to filter content that violates the OpenAI's usage and policies. And there is also the options to use fine tuning in order to customize the models with your own data in a specific domain. And things are moving very fast in the AI ecosystem. So this is always good practice to check out the list of available models. Code Interpreter is a powerful tool, allowing to expand the capabilities of ChatGPT. For example, things and tasks that ChatGPT cannot do, Code Interpreter can help with that. So Code Interpreter can help process files, upload and download files. It can analyze and create data visualizations. For example, you can upload data along with the text input and ask to create data visualizations by using graphs, charts, and maps. The other great capacity of Code Interpreter is that it can execute code within a Python sandboxed environment, which allows to test and run your code right inside the chatbot. Code Interpreter is also useful for marketing professionals to create presentations with dynamic graphs, generate outputs in PowerPoints, in Word documents, and in multiple files extensions. For SEO purposes, it can help with content optimization by analyzing search engine algorithm and user behavior and all of that based on simple inputs and data that you can upload directly to the chatbot. And of course, Code Interpreter is a great tool to level up coding. Code Interpreter differs from ChatGPT as it can execute code within a sandboxed environment and return the output within the conversation, which allows users to test and run code snippets, perform calculations, and explore data directly within the chatbot. Similarly to ChatGPT, Code Interpreter can provide assistance in debugging code and explain common mistakes. It can generate code snippets based on users' descriptions and requirements. And it can understand multiple programming languages. The coding process with Code Interpreter can be smooth and very user-friendly. And it is good for learners, as users can improve their coding skills and knowledge to accelerate development with instant feedback, explanations, and debugging tips. Up next, we're going to see how to activate the Code Interpreter plugin. We're going to see how to use it. We're going to see it in action with real-world examples of task, general task, and coding task to process files, create data visualizations, and ready-to-use presentations, and also to create fun projects like games. Getting started with ChatGPT Code Interpreter is simple and easy. To use and activate the Code Interpreter feature, you go to the Settings. You select Settings and Beta. Then you select beta features and make sure that you switch the toggle first for the plugins and code interpreter. For the moment, at the time of recording, code interpreter is only accessible to plus users. So after activation, you can go here to select the GPT-4 model. So again, this is accessible to plus users. And in the drop down list, you're going to make sure that the code interpreter feature is checked like so. So as a reminder, you need to be a plus user to access the GPT-4 model and the ChatGPT plugins, including Code Interpreter. So if you don't see it, I highly recommend that you upgrade from the free to the plus subscription. So now you're all set to get started with Code Interpreter. So let's start with the first prompt. I'm going to write something like, are you able to perform data visualization like so? I'm going to say from a text input. I'm going to see what it says. Response is yes. So it looks like this is perfectly capable of creating data visualizations from a text input. So that's exactly what we intend to do next. So great. Looks like we're all set. So let's take code interpreter for a spin next. Now we're going to see a few examples of code that we're going to run and execute within the chat GPT. So that's going to be with code interpreter. So you're going to make sure that this is selected GPT-4 and that code interpreter is checked. So we're going to start with a first example. We're going to use the same data from a previous exercise. First, I'm going to ask, write a function to find even numbers. That's going to be my first request. And let's see the outputs. Okay, very simple. So the output is this function written in Python, which is to run 
iterate over an array and check if a number is divisible by two and check if this is zero. If this is zero, this means that this is even, otherwise this is odd. So next I'm gonna ask run this function with the array, the following array, and that's gonna be a mix of even and odd numbers. Let's try that and you're gonna see what happens. So what's happening here is that within ChatGPT, we're gonna run the code, execute the code within a Python sandboxed environment. And here is the result. We can see that from the given array, the result of the even numbers is 4, 10, and 34. We can collapse and see the details of the work. So it runs the same function to check which number is even from this array. And we can see that the result is 4, 10, and 34. And this is like a console. This looks like the same console that we see in the browser. So I am providing you with a few instructions in order to write create prompts. And we're going to start with this data set, which is actually the same that we used in a previous example, which is the list of the top 10 applications with the number of users. So let's copy this and paste it inside the chatbot in the input. We're going to see what is the result. So it's going to give us, of course, a description. And because it was written originally in JavaScript, it's going to convert the code in Python because within this environment, everything is run and executed in Python. And now it is asking, so what we would like to do with this data? So that's great because what we would like to do is to create some data visualization. So this is actually the next request that I have provided here. So we're going to copy, create data visualization in a table. Let's try that. And you're going to see that here as well, it's going to work. It's going to start working within the sandboxed environment. And you can actually collapse and see the process as this is going, if you'd like. Okay, so it started to create the table to represent the data of the top 10 applications and the number of users in billions. Okay, so that's great. And after that, this is giving us a description of this, of this representation. Excellent. So next, what I'd like is to have a representation in dynamic charts. Let's do that. That's going to be kind of the same request. It's going to create visuals for us. So here as well, it's going to open, it's going to run this within a sandboxed environment. And here as well, you can open and see how this is being processed as it goes. So here is the result of the data visualization with dynamic charts. And after that, you've got a description. And in this example, looks like this is Facebook, which has the biggest share of users among the top 10 applications. So next we're gonna ask, do the same with a pie chart. Let's see. Excellent, here it is. And we've got, of course, here as well, an explanation telling us that each slice of the pie chart represents one web application. And the size, which is represented in percentage, represents the portion, I mean, the distribution of users. And here as well, because this is Facebook, which is using up like the largest portion of users, it has 21, 8%. We can see that it has the highest size, the biggest size. Okay, so that's great. So next, what I need to do is to prepare a presentation. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT with Code Interpreter to create a slide deck. So let's go back here to our instructions and we're gonna write this instruction. So this long detailed prompt that says, create a well-formatted report and write this to a Word document, then create a PowerPoint presentation with the analyzed and visualized data set with other insights, if possible. So let's copy the whole thing and paste it here. So of course you are free to write your own prompt based on your needs and use cases. So here as well, it's gonna run this within a sandbox environment. And we're gonna wait because this may take quite some time. Okay, so here is the output. As soon as it's finished, we can read that it has created a Word document that includes the data, the insight, the visualizations. So we first have here this link 
which is available to download the results of the work in a Word document. So I'm going to open it while this is working for the rest of the preparation. Okay, so here is the result. So written in a Word document. And first we have an explanation of this report with the data set, the insights, and followed by the data representations in bar charts and also the pie charts. So this is a good starting point. Let's see what we have now this time. So this is still working. We're going to see what's going to be the results for our presentation, but this time by using slides. It's going to create a slide deck for us. OK, so it finally created a PowerPoint presentation that is available, downloadable with this link. So I'm going to click it. Here we go. I'm going to open it with Keynote. And while this is being opened, I just want to show you the different steps that it took to process this request because it looks like ChatGPT and Code Interpreter ran into some issues and sometimes some content was missing. So the work that it has done is to fill in the blanks in order to be able to proceed and achieve the task, which is to create a presentation. So for the second attempt, looks like there was a placeholder or a title that was missing and that was causing the error. So Code Interpreter was able to fix this by adding manually a title. So it is able also to compensate if there is anything missing. And after the fourth attempt, it was finally able to finish the work with this result. And we're going to look at it. Here in Keynote, we've got this presentation of the data set, some insights, and finally the data visualization. So this is a good starting point. Of course, you're going to need to make some updates to make it like to change it and polish it. But this is a good starting point. So the sandbox provides a temporary disk space to store the documents and the assets for a limited time. So the language models run with a working Python interpreter in a sandboxed execution environment, along with some disk space to execute the code safely. So the code in the assets will persist for as long as the session is up and running. With Code Interpreter, you can do a lot of things, a lot of things extra with ChatGPT, like creating data visualizations from text input or from a data set. You can download the files, and you're going to see later that it is also possible to upload assets right into the chatbot. So it is possible to create data visualizations and presentations. It is like accessing a computer right inside the chatbot, and it is useful both for general tasks and coding tasks. Up next, we're going to see an example of a 2D game with graphics and assets, and we're going to build this with Code Interpreter. So for this challenge, what we want to do with Code Interpreter is to build a 2D game, which will be the Space Innovators, so the Space Invaders from Outer Space. So for that, I'm providing with instructions, so we're going to look at them. And the first instruction is, remember, is to have this checked, which is Code Interpreter. Okay. We're going to ask ChatGPT and Code Interpreter to output all the assets, the source code and the assets within the chatbot. And we're going to use another environment to run it, to execute it. We're going to play the game outside of this chatbot environment. And for the instructions, what you're going to need to do is to use the assets. So I am providing you with assets for this game. Let's look at them. Here you're going to find them. So you're going to have several assets first for the aliens, like a green alien, another one red, and here another one yellow. And here is the asset, a PNG file for the player, the space shift actually, which is going to be moving left and right. And it's going to shoot the alien off the screen, off the space, to eliminate the aliens one by one until they're gone and the player wins. So let's look at the instructions for this game right here. So this is going to be a detailed and well-formatted prompt in order to give the different steps to create this game. So first, what we need is to have this game, the source code written in JavaScript. We're going to define the size of the canvas, which will be 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. You can use different size, a different size if you wish. Then we're going to ask the source code to be outputted by providing like the path to the assets. So what we're going to do first is to upload the assets. We're going to use code interpreter to upload the assets that I have just shown you right here. So we're going to use them 
So the way it works, I'm going to show you actually, you can take one asset and drag it all the way here. You're going to see the plus and here you can upload and we're going to do that and you can hit send. So it needs to be done one by one. Just so you know, you cannot upload them all together. You need to do it to do this step one by one. And it's going to tell you that great. You have successfully uploaded one file, which is named so-and-so. So after that, so also it is asking the question, so how can I assist you? So we're going to then put the prompt, which is this one with all the, the steps to create the game. So after that, we're going to describe the games that the aliens move toward the bottom of the screen past a certain time. And then the game stops when the aliens touch the bottom. The player can move left and right and it can shoot the alien. We're going to press on the space bar to send to shoot the aliens off the screen of the space. The number of lives will be three, which is standard, and the score count will be displayed at the top on the top of the screen. So what happens during the game is that when the player hits an alien, the player's score increments by one. And when this is the player which is hit by an alien, the number of lives decreases by one. So this is kind of extra. And when all aliens are hit and gone, the player wins and the game stops. But if the number of lives is zero, or if the aliens touches the bottom right here, this is game over. So this is either one. If this is the number of lives, which is zero, or whenever the aliens touch the bottom, it is game over. Okay, so good luck. I'm going to let you do that. So you are free to use describe the game as you wish or find inspiration and instructions from the internet. So good luck and have fun. And we're going to see the solutions together in the next video. So for the solution.